Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Long Range Shooters of Utah. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit more about the Anneli's Annealer. This guy right here. Uh, we've already done one video on this, so if you're watching this video you haven't seen the other, you may want to check it out. In that first video we did the unboxing of the Anneli's. We went through the basic setup of the Anneli's. And then tonight we're going to actually go through how to anneal your brass, how to set it up properly, fine tune it, make sure you're getting the proper temperature, and really what goes into annealing your brass after you've fired it the first time or subsequent times before that. One thing of note that I want to talk about before we dive into the details is one mistake that I did make in the first video, and that is the way I positioned the propane bottle. After posting that video, I immediately got an email from uh, Jeff, who's the owner of Annealy's, letting me know that you need to put the bottle upright rather than laying down because otherwise the liquid propane will get into the hose and eventually find its way into the nozzle and potentially clog it later down the road. So what we mean by that is if we spin the annealies around you notice that we have our propane bottle in here. Let me zoom in real quick so you get a better shot of that. So as you can see here we've got the back side of the annealies. We've got our propane bottle lying horizontally that's what Jeff indicated was not a good idea because once again this is a liquid propane it's going to convert to a gas if you have it on its side you're going to be getting liquid propane into the hose that could potentially cause you some problems so what he suggested was running it vertically probably just need to situate the hose as such but to actually keep it standing up in there vertically uh, so that you don't have those problems so be sure that you set it up in that fashion now before we get started using the Neelys take a minute to just talk about safety. So obviously we've got propane gas here, we've got flames here, so be smart. Make sure you've put the propane tank on properly, you've got it nice and snug, you don't have any leaks. One thing I did notice when I did set my machine up initially is that right here on the nozzle where the hose meets the nozzle, it was loose, so it could have been potentially leaking gas. Obviously something you would want to uh, do a walkthrough of the machine before you actually light it up and make sure that you don't have any leaks, everything is tight, secure, and working properly. Also, you want to make sure you don't have any flammable around. So, for instance, uh, you know, some paper towels sit on your workbench, maybe some powder. Uh, you could have uh, rounds that are sitting there that are full of powder. Just be smart about it. Make sure that uh, you've got this in a safe place. Uh, even here on my bench, I've got some, some wood posts there. Uh, having this set back here close where it's putting flame directly on there, probably not the best idea so you want to make sure that you're doing this safely uh, it's really not going to project flame very far but just be safe so now we've talked about safety uh, let's talk about the general setup so we went through the first video uh, you may want to watch that to see how it comes out of the box how you attach the propane tank and how you do the basic adjustments uh, but we have it more or less set up now and this video is really about fine-tuning the setup and annealing the brass so step two so first things first, uh, we probably want to grab some brass, which I just happened to have uh, shot a competition this weekend. So I've got a bunch of my 6547 brass. I'm just going to take one here. And I'm going to place it right in here where the brass is typically going to be uh, when you're running the annealer. Let me zoom in a little closer so you can see what we're doing. So what I want to do is put that brass there to do a couple of things. First of all, we want to make sure the nozzle is pointed in the correct direction at the proper angle. We also want to make sure that the distance between the nozzle and the brass itself is as it should be. Now what they recommend from Annealy's is that you have the nozzle about an inch to an inch and a quarter away from the brass, which is roughly what I have here. So eyeball it, maybe take a ruler, make sure you're about that distance. You just want to make sure you're getting proper heating, you're getting enough heat, not too much heat. We're also going to be able to adjust a little bit of that when it comes to adjusting the flame itself. Uh, basically what they suggest is to have the blue portion of the flame, so you've got the outer flame and you've got the inner flame, to have that brighter blue inner flame just touching the brass itself. And you want to have it aimed right here where the neck meets the shoulder, roughly. The idea is that you don't want to have the heat transferring too far down on the case itself. You want to have it be on the neck, make sure you get all the neck and a little bit of the shoulder but not too far down. The first time I ran this brass, I believe I did do it maybe a little too shallow so it got a little more of the shoulder than I probably ideally would want, but really not too bad. I think it's probably okay. So we want to make sure we've got it aimed in the proper spot and as we run a few brasses as a test, 
that we're making sure we're not getting heat too far down and that we are getting it up here on the neck. So if I place it in there, I can eyeball it, um, get it close, and then really to do the final test, you're going to want to fire it up, light the torch, and make sure you're getting the flame on the brass. You also then want to use another item that you're going to need in order to anneal, and that's Tempelac. Tempelac is essentially a, a liquid that you paint on your brass, or paint on anything for that matter, and it will change color or will go clear when it reaches a certain temperature. So they make this in a whole variety of different temperatures. This one is set for 750 degrees Fahrenheit or 399 degrees Celsius. So what you would do is paint this on your brass. You do have to shake it up. It does uh, separate. And I understand it does go bad after a period of time. Uh, so just take a little bit of that. Take our brass. And we're going to paint a little bit around the neck of the case. Now some do suggest that you do a second temple lac and do it on the body of the case as a safeguard. The idea there being is that you do want the neck to get to a certain temperature, but you do not want the body of the brass to, to reach too high of a temperature and anneal the rest of it. You just want to anneal this top portion. Um, so some will put temple lac down here when they're running their test rounds just to make sure they've got the nozzle pointed in the right direction and they're not getting too much heat transferring down in the body of the case. So once you put the temple lac on, you do need to let it dry. So uh, so I may have put a little too much temple lac on there. I know a lot of guys will just put one little strip. Uh, I put quite a bit on here. Rookie move maybe. Um, on the inside you can see I put a little bit as well. What I'm looking for is that this is going to go completely clear uh, once it reaches 750 degrees, which is where we want it to stop. We don't want it to go beyond that point. So what we're going to do is put it in the machine, light the torch, make sure it's pointed in the right direction, make sure we're getting good heating, and then go ahead and adjust the timing of the annealies to make sure that we're annealing it just enough, but not too much. So basically what I would re recommend is taking uh, either have a couple brass that you can use as a test, or just grab a few out of the, the you know, lot that you're going to be annealing, and put the temple lac on, run them through, and then just make those fine adjustments until you uh, arrive at proper balance between uh, you know, getting the temple lac to go clear and then having it out of the flame at that point. Uh, one other item to talk about is quenching. Um, you don't need to quench. So quenching would be like you think with a blacksmith in olden times of having, you know, forging a, a sword or something and then putting it in cold water. You don't need to do that. Uh, it'll cool on its own and it doesn't, there's no benefit to doing that. So okay. first of all, I got to reach around the back here and turn on the gas. I'll turn that on, make sure this one is closed, which it is. Uh, you will need a little lighter of some kind. Now you want to keep in mind here, we mentioned this in the first video, these wheels are nylon, they will melt if you do have the flame pointed directly to them. Um, with this little attachment, what you've got is a thumb screw here, uh, and you can turn that and that's going to allow you to change the angle. Obviously the nozzle has a bend in it, so if I wanted to go further out I can twist it and it will angle it outward. If I want it further in I can twist it down. Um, also this allows me to adjust the depth, how close it is to the brass. Once again you want it about an inch away, inch and a quarter away. And then just checking the angle here, cinch it down. As far as the uh, direction here, the, the, the swiveling it around, there is a half inch uh, nut on the back and also right here basically you could just loosen that back one up turn it where you want it and then tighten it also because this creates a little bit of a lever you can just sort of move it and adjust it like that as well within a, a certain amount so let's go ahead and fire it up and if you can't quite get it to light you probably have too much gas flowing so just turn it down. I mean, literally, you barely have to turn this on to get it to light. So as you can see, I've got that flame just about where I can get something to, something to point here. Right here where this metal is is roughly where the brass is going to be. So you want to have that you know, brighter blue tip right there just about where that is, just touching the brass. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Now up here is where you control the speed of the wheels, so if I flip this on, that'll make them go slower, and of course go faster. What Jeff suggests is it's usually going to be somewhere in the middle, 
So you may want to start uh, in the middle and then work your way either faster or slower to make sure that you're achieving the proper temperature. All right, so I've got the flame pointed roughly in the direction that I want it to go. I've got it adjusted out where it's reaching about the point that I want it to. Now I can go ahead and flip it on and run a few brass through the machine. Looks like I need to point it just a little bit more up. So if we look inside, you can tell that the Tempelac has gone clear on the inside. You're not seeing it in there anymore. So it looks like we're pretty close to reaching the temperature that we want. So let's run a couple more through and uh, watch it closely and see if we're hitting that 750 degree mark that we're looking for. So it looks like we're just barely getting there, which is probably what we want. So looking here at this second one we've run through, you can also see that it's cooked out all the temple act. Temple act's gone completely clear. So I think we've achieved the temperature that we're looking for. So it looks like we're getting about the temperature that we want. Um, you'll notice where I have the flame, the intensity I have it set at. And then if you look up here at the top, I've got it just about dead center. I feel like it's just barely getting to the temperature before it moves the shell, so I might slow it down just a touch. But overall, I think we've got we've got a good setup here. So we've got the torch point in the right direction. We've got our timing set. Now we can go ahead and run the rest of the brass through. Okay, so as you can see, I've got it fully loaded with brass. I've got about six left in my tray here that I used for testing, and so that leaves 94 in the tray. As you can see, you've got plenty of capacity. Um, typically when I shoot a match, it's going to be somewhere around 100 rounds of ammo that I go through. So pretty awesome capacity. Uh, in comparison to other annealers out there, like the Gerode for instance, that's the same sort of style, you'll be able to load probably more in the Gerode, maybe even double or triple as many. Uh, but for most people's purposes, they don't really need to go through an anneal three or 400 brass at a time. Plus, I can run 100 through here, and then I can just be loading it as I go, or I can do it in cycles. So really the idea of having a bigger one, I don't really see the need, especially when it's two or $300 more expensive. Um, so for this particular niche, for the average guy, I think the annealies would be an awesome fit. So let's go ahead and run through these 100 brass. I'm gonna put a timer next to the camera here and get a time on about how long it takes to do 100 brass.
dead air armament. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Kelly McMillan. Right, shot show 2016. We're gonna give it a shot right now. 